Hey, good evening, guys. It is 10:14 uh, p.m. on Tuesday, April 9th, 2019. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, just making a brief video here, guys, regarding to the main risk event uh, in the news coming up this uh, tomorrow. So at uh, 8:30 tomorrow morning. Um, New York time. I don't know why I'm on next week. Here we go. So uh, 7.45 tomorrow morning. Uh, again, this is New York time. The uh, European Central Bank is going to put out their main refinancing rate, which is not expected to change. So that's not the, the important thing here. The important thing here will be the monetary policy statement that will accompany it. And then Mario Draghi, the ECB president, will have a press conference 45 minutes later at 8.30 New York time. So right at the beginning of the New York session this will uh, all happen and so uh this is kind of the the highlight for the week in terms of risk event and what's going to happen now the ecb uh has been very dovish and if we look here you know the european data continues to success as the suggest there's a growing risk of a technical recession while data continues to suggest a weak economic activity, we expect the ECB to maintain their increasingly dovish stance and the euro to ma maintain its bearish bias. So, uh, you know, if we um, look at the charts, pretty much all the euro pairs have been trending down. There's euro yen, euro kiwi, although euro kiwi has broken back out, but maybe this is as a result of the kiwi being weak more so than the euro being strong is euro canadian daily there's all daily charts guys um there's euro aussie and then finally euro uh dollar uh, all down so um so you know technically we have been uh going down and that is because the euro again has been pretty weak now, there is some contrarian view that the uh, ECB is not going to be any more dovish than they've already been, and that that's already priced into the market. And some people suspect that the market, the euro, may actually rally coming out of the news tomorrow. So that's an interesting take. If we go to forexlive.com, uh, they have this posting that they put up earlier today, and this is the uh, preview. And uh, this blogger here, he actually posted several uh, links here from different investment houses and analysts about where they feel the, the bank is going to go. And pretty much what they all say is that they're still expecting, while there could be some question about it, they're, they're all still pretty much expecting that Draghi is going to continue to uh, push the dovish uh, tilt um, to the um, uh, to the uh, statement and, and what they're doing. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, Mario Draghi, uh, this guy right here, who's the ECB president, always has a way of kind of surprising the market or often has a way of surprising the market. So it will be interesting to see whether uh, he really uh, smashes the euro down more or whether he pulls back a little bit or even if he remains, keeps the same stance, will that... Um, Will the market just take that as well? There's nothing new there, and we've already pushed the euro down, 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 down. So now we're going to buy it back. So it uh, remains to be seen um, exactly what's going to happen. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I read through all these earlier, um, you know, and, and basically, like I said, um, you know, that Draghi will, this is really the point, Draghi will stick to his previous mantra of risk to the downside. But again, if that's nothing new, then, um, uh, you know, we could see the uh, the euro strengthen. Uh, in this particular, who was this that wrote this one? Um, uh, this was written by uh, this guy, Adam, who's uh, Adam Button, who's also uh, a Forex Live uh, writer, blogger. Um, and uh, he has this quote here that came from... Uh, this is from Lloyd's, Lloyd's of London, um, and basically saying, uh, however, we see indications that a cyclical upswing will follow the latest string of poor data, and in fact, some indications even point to the latest data not having has been as poor as some might fear. We suspect, however, that Draghi will continue to stick to his previous mantra. So 
there's the question, guys, about, you know, what exactly he's going to say. You know, has the downside risk been overblown and the markets is finding a reason to sell it? And uh, now, you know, if, if the market, it, it's not that they're going to come out hawkish, okay? There's not going to be a hawkish tilt. But if he pulls back a little bit on the dovish tilt and says, well, you know, maybe things aren't so bad or we're expecting a, you know, quick recovery, cyclical upswing or whatever, or even if there's just no change at all, and it's not any more dovish than he's already, than they've been lately, that that could push the market higher, okay? So that's what to keep an eye out for in the statement. Um, and uh, certainly um, that will be reinforced by whatever he says during um during his press conference. What you often see on the charts during these times, guys, the statement will come out and there'll be an initial reaction, but then things kind of like stop and kind of move sideways or maybe whip back the other way. And they wait for Draghi to come out and run his press conference. And uh, then, uh, you know, maybe a half an hour into the press conference, everybody kind of knows after he makes his initial statement, everybody will kind of know really what they're thinking. And then everybody will decide what they want to do. So you might see some volatility or maybe in some inaction initially uh, or some volatility where things kind of whip around and then everybody's going to wait until they really digest the statement and listen to Draghi talk during his press conference uh, and get some questions answered. All right. So, um, so it should be an interesting event from a standpoint of the charts, just really, uh, really quick again. Um, of course, like I said, the Euro Kiwi has broken out. We have this, falling wedge on the daily chart it's broken out but again this is more driven by the euro i'm um, excuse me by kiwi weakness after their dovish tilt a couple of weeks back you don't really see this in the other euro pairs so uh you know we'll see this def definitely looks like it wants to go up again but you know we're still um about 10 hours from this news so you know a lot's going to happen this is a three hour chart uh so we'll see where this looks like um Euro Canadian, um, you know, again, uh, you know, we have pushed up a little bit here, but this is really not very impressive. So I, I don't, the bottom line is, guys, I don't see anything really uh, impressive on the charts. In the Euro dollar, I have this arrow drawn right here because this looks like this is going to go up again. To me, this is probably, this is probably a wave one right here. Let me see, I can draw this out. So I'm looking at this as, three, four, five, something like that. Thinking this move up was a wave one, then we had an ABC down, and now we've got a move back to the upside. One, two, three, four, five. Zoom out a little bit here. So this was an initial move up, then we had an ABC down, and a one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So this actually could be, this actually might be the end of the three right here. And now we're gonna go up for five. So we'll see. So the, the euro dollar to me looks like it wants to go up. So that's of, of all the euro pairs, other than maybe the euro kiwi and the euro dollar, to me look like they want to go up. I don't think there's really anything clear on the other ones. Uh, let me just look at the U.S. Swiss really quick. So this would also confirm it. So I had this arrow I put on here last night. So this is the euro, the U.S. Swiss, which is the opposite of the euro dollar. This pair moves. Uh, as a mirror opposite of the euro dollar and so if the euro goes up the u.s swiss goes down and vice versa and so um if you look at the u.s swiss on the uh there's the nine hour chart here's the 12 hour chart is the daily chart but we drop back down a little bit this definitely looks like a corrective move so if the euro does strengthen then another trade to take potentially would be the u.s swiss short and the U.S. dollar has been under a little bit more pressure, um, you know, because uh, employment data has been pretty good. But, you know, there's there's been some other there's some other things going on with the U.S. dollar that, you know, have kind of spooked the market a little bit. So um, right now, if the euro strengthens, my my trades right now would be to uh, sell the U.S. Swiss, buy euro dollar, buy euro kiwi. Um, th those would be my my. Uh, my potential trades. And you also could consider buying Euro, Aussie, Euro, Canadian, because um, uh, the Canadian, the Aussie are kind of neutral right now. They don't really have a real strong bias. So if you pair it against a strong currency, that's not a bad trade either. But I think fundamentally, the best trades would be 
U.S. Swiss short, Euro dollar long, and Euro Kiwi long. So th those will be my first few choices to take. Anyways, guys, so I don't want to belabor this too much, but, uh, um, you know, I strongly suggest that you uh, digest the statement as soon as it comes out. Uh, you can go on ForexLive.com. They're going to immediately put out the statement and, and we'll uh, bulletize it in a blog post. If you don't have, uh, you know, any other type of real-time service, I think this would be a really great way to uh, get the information it is on ForexLive.com. So be tuned in. As soon as it comes out, they'll post it and then they'll post the headline and then they'll keep adding to the post with as they digest it and uh, put up some bullet points. Um, and then, of course, you'll be able to listen to Mario Draghi's press conference live. They usually post a link for it right here, and you can click on it, and it, that's free to watch. And you can listen to uh, listen to him talk if you really want to. Um, and, um, you know, by the time he makes his initial statement, you'll probably pretty much know uh, what he's getting at. Uh, beyond that, um, he'll, he'll, he takes questions and answers. Pretty much by then, it's the cat's out of the bag, and... You're not probably not going to hear anything during the Q&A session that's going to really do anything. So the key will be in the the actual written statement and then his initial comments at the press conference uh, 45 minutes later. But anyways, guys, so that's it. Uh, keep an eye on things. Uh, I, I think there could be a decent trade out of this, but uh, don't be surprised if, um, if we do see some upside in the euro, at least in the short term. Um, I wouldn't be surprised either way. And if they are more dovish, then the euro will fall through the floor. But uh, I think on the chart suggests maybe some upside. And fundamentally, there could be something in the fact that um, it's already been priced in or if they lighten up on their dovish stance a little bit, even just a little bit, that's going to send the euro higher. So anyways, guys, uh, I'll, I'll probably try to make a follow up after and we'll see what actually happened and uh, go back and look at the chart. So in the statement. All right, guys, so that's it. Uh, good luck. Be safe trading. Use good risk management and just be careful. Um, these can be great opportunities you don't need to be afraid of, but you do have to be smart and use good risk management and just understand uh, what's coming out and be ready for it um, one way or another. All right, guys, have a great night. We'll talk to you all soon.